I'm at the Knickerbocker Hotel, apparently a place Al Capone liked to spend a lot of time. So it makes sense I'm going to talk about prison today to lawyers. A few minutes ago, a lawyer called me aside and said, what is one day in federal prison like? So here it goes. I would wake at 4 o'clock every morning, sit in my cubicle for an hour, drinking coffee, planning the day ahead. Just after 5 o'clock in the morning, the count would clear. That meant I was allowed to leave the cubicle. From there, I'd walk with my notebook and dictionary to the quiet room where I would work alongside my business partner, Michael Santos, for 90 minutes. I would read, I would write my blog, we were working on uh, my manuscript, Lessons from Prison, a book you can still get for free, do not buy it. And at 6.30 in the morning, the doors to the chow hall or dining room would open. I always went to breakfast in the chow hall because we had limited things that we could buy in the commissary, so I wanted to go down there and get as much fruit and milk, whatever I could. Go down to the ch uh, dining room at 6.30, leave around seven o'clock in the morning, go back upstairs, change, get ready to do my morning exercise. Great track at this federal prison, a lot of amenities to exercise. I was pleasantly surprised. In prison, I became a long distance runner. So I would run 10 miles or so from eight o'clock to 10 o'clock every single morning, or at least five days a week. At 10 o'clock, you would hear the guard say, attention campers, the compound is now closed. Report back to your designated housing unit for count. That message is stamped on my mind forever. <laughs> we would go back to the uh, to the dorm, stand for count to 1030, depending on how long it took the guards to clear the count. Around 11 a.m. the doors would open to go to the, the dining room again or chow hall. I tended to not go to lunch. I would cook in my cubicle with food I had purchased in the commissary. Around noon, when lunch was ending, I would have to go down to the dining room or chow hall to do pots and pans, which was my job. That wrapped up around 12.30 or one o'clock. I would head back upstairs, shower, usually for the first or second time, and then I would work until five o'clock in the library or the quiet room. Again, no TV for me, no hustling, no iPhones, no trouble, no wasting time because I was scared to death what was gonna happen for me on the other side. So I used that four hours to prepare and think. Then at five o'clock, the doors open for the chow hall again. Maybe I would go to dinner, maybe not. But what I had to do at the end of dinner was go down for my second shift in the kitchen that ended around six o'clock. From there, I would go back upstairs and I was exhausted. When you get up at four o'clock in the morning, you run and you read and you write and you think and you call home and you're preparing for the other side, it's going to exhaust you, which meant like a 90 year old man every single day, regardless of how noisy it was in the dorm, regardless of the, the crazy things that were happening inside of this dorm, how light, I, didn't matter, 7.30 every single night, uh, I went to bed and I did that for each of the 388 days I served in prison. Some people say it's boring. For me, it was an enlightening experience that helped me prepare for a richer, more meaningful life after federal prison.